All right, so I just wanted to give a quick like overview of uh, basically shortest path slash longest path heat map um, on uh, basically ground mapping. Uh, I was kind of interested in using this in term uh, for like an isochrone map. Obviously, um, I wanted to find an implementation in grass rhino grasshopper. Um, not in like a in QGIS or ArcGIS. Uh, basically, wanting to do uh, network analysis um, on like a just a simple street grid. I basically just wanted to know like accessibility from one place to another, uh, and came across uh, this really great resource called Plan UND, um, and this implementation of a script that uses um, the Spiderweb plugin. Um, and, uh, yeah, it has a really actually super easy implementation of this. So I'm just going to run through, um, I'll put this in the, in the comments and I'll link a Dropbox to the folder as well. Um, but this is just like super, uh, really, really like super easy, super straightforward actually. Um, and you can get a pretty, pretty nice map. So there, um, shout out to these guys, uh, these folks. Um, they're basically using this map to show proximity to churches. I just wanted it to show proximity to like a, a transit stop. So hopping into Rhino, um, basically just going to show quickly um, what I what I brought in and what I started with. Uh, so just like looking outside, turning off Rhino uh, Grasshopper Preview, I basically just have a um, a legend rectangle here. I have a boundary rectangle that I just drew. And these, I'm just, these circles I just drew just to indicate a focus area. And then a sort of point about like the the, the point or points. You, you could, of course, have multiple points. I'm just going to have one. Um, and I've drawn those and I've just like separated those out into layers. Their implementation, um, they use uh, like geometry pipeline in Grasshopper. Um, I just, I don't like uh, geometry pipelines. They're very useful, but uh, in this case, I, I didn't want to use it. Um, so first things first, I'll just go through my preview and just like show you what I did and some things that I uh, ran into here. So um, first things first is I'm bringing in um, geometry from OpenStreetMaps. So I'm using the plugin Elk2 um, and basically bringing in, so I have my uh, location data, I'm plugging in the OpenStreetMaps file here. Yeah. Um, and then plugging it into my the location component and then just like sifting through uh, the OpenStreetMaps uh, metadata to find the, the geometry that I want. And then I'm plugging all that stuff into a polyline. So um, I'll just turn on the previews here so we can see a little better. So I'm going to, I'm basically bringing in buildings just so we can like read the map uh, a little better. So buildings are down here. Um, then I have the roads here and it's not a particularly extensive road network, but um, you know, uh, worth just like the, just using this for the, um, for the sake of this example. Um, and I have this train line here, and this transit stop is the point of interest. Um, so I'm taking my road geometry here, and I'm exploding it. And then I'm just making sure it's all lines, feeding it into a line component. Um, then, so the, this implementation uses uh, the spider web um, plugins for Grasshopper basically creates like a uh, network and um, lots of different uses for this tool. I don't, have never used it before, uh, but found that um, found it initially as a possible um, possible way of creating uh, and making this graph. Um, and then found uh, this implementation from, from online. So, 
yeah, Inscall, Elk, and Spiderweb, uh, both food for Rhino plugins, very, very useful. Um, so here I'm referencing my, just my boundary, and that's gonna be the boundary that the map is created on. Um, it's gonna turn into a mesh. So the background layer is gonna be a mesh. Um, so this basically is just controlling the, the UV of that mesh. Uh, I'm plugging in the points here. So this point is just like my general like location of interest. It can be really anywhere, uh, point or points. Um, then this is basically asking me how like far away from the line I, uh, I want to like uh, display uh, as well as the length of the sort of like lengths of the road um, that I'm interested in. So if you have like a segment of the road that's too long, it'll, it'll split it. Um, and then in this case, I'm basically, uh, you'll, you'll understand this better. This is, understand this better later. Uh, this is like 5,200 because it's, that's feet to a mile. So I'm basically interested in like a mile radius. Uh, and then um, just referencing the uh, legend curve and I was experiencing a couple of weird things where like the text was mirrored. Um, all you had, all I had to do was mirror this curve a couple, it's just all about the curve construction. So I just mirrored the curve and rotated it and everything uh, sorted itself out without any problem. Um, and this is just asking about uh, color distribution. So I'm um, just bringing, feeding my lines into uh, this graph from line component. And this is basically shattering uh, those lines. So you, you're just ending up with a lot of different curve uh, segments. Um, and then I'm feeding this into a, a closest point and single source shortest path component. Uh, then um, they have a good, good amount of documentation on this, but basically flipping the matrix, sorting and uh, choosing numbers, uh, just using some, doing some list work here. And then this is essentially creating the map. So when I turn this on, and maybe turn this off, I'm essentially getting this quite nice colorful map. Um, telling me, oh, and let me turn on my uh, legend. Oops. So basically from this point, we're getting um, a distance value. Um, and I guess we're, we're kind of using this road, I guess it's just taking closest point to the curve. Um, uh, blue being the closest all the way up to red being the furthest away, obviously. So, I mean, this is, a, I think this is a pretty interesting um, quick way of doing like an isochrone analysis, especially, and well, okay, not isochrone distance analysis, um, just like straight out of OpenStreetMap, very, very quick implementation. Um, so yeah, just to go over again quickly, bringing in uh, OpenStreetMap's file, doing a little bit of display, uh, feeding these uh, various geometry inputs in and just like making some decisions about resolution here. Um, and then this is all their script. Um, I'm just borrowing um, and uh, creating this contour mesh. Uh, this basically is just saying there are some null uh, null faces with, and that's just the white here. And we're basically just choosing the white. So I think if we change this to black where this is the sort of uh, null area, but um, obviously no transparency. So um, yeah, great. And then the, uh, you know, you can obviously choose set your unit here that all has to be done um, manually. Uh, you can choose your colors, of course. Um, and then I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I hope, I hope this helps. Hope, um, hope you find some good uses for it. Okay. Enjoy. <laughs>